Okay, Forest 101. These are called trees. <laughs> Try it again, I'll be kicking you a funny blind the hooky. You and what arm? Oi! Oh. Fire! Oh. Stupid season! Ooh, he's a cuddly, lovable bear who uh, one day has to realize that he does have real grizzly bear skills. Put your hands together for boo. The story is about a domesticated bear. Is this your doll? <laughs> <laughs> that gets put into the wild for the first time and is trying to get back home to the city. Woods is no place for a bear. He's got a companion. Rose before does. That is a one antler deer. Half doe, half buck. I'm a duck. Y'all are crazy. It's about the two most unlikely characters becoming friends while overcoming the obstacle of the wilderness. Partners? So disgusting. <laughs> Boob is a living in the lap of luxury in Park Ranger Beth's garage. Did I forget something? He's got a soft bed, he's got a teddy bear, he's got a TV and a toilet. He, he thinks the way he's living, that's the way it's supposed to be. This here is my home. Sweet. Well, I like the fun of uh, what these two characters bring. What's that? You want one? You gotta go. Outside. Outside? <laughs> what is that? Whoa, let me try. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Boop, boop. Uh -oh. Hello, idiot. It's Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> Come in peace. Boog, are you awake? I am now. Awesome. Boog is difficult with me. What are you going to do? Ah! You're funny. <laughs> Elliot does everything in his power to make the relationship work. I think I'm getting a sunburn or a moonburn. Check it out. <laughs> First, Boog doesn't really like Elliot, but he finds that he got to get to know him. He thinks Elliot can show him the way back to Timberline. I'm starving. Well, what do bears eat? Fish. Give it up for Boog. When humans are around, all the animals act like animals. So they go down on four legs. They don't talk when humans are around. But as soon as the hunters of the forest come in, they freak out. They run away. The hunters are here. Hunters? We're sitting ducks out here. It's a tragedy. The bear, that deer working together. Shaw is somebody that we get to watch actually go a little mad. He is the only one who believes that these animals are truly in revolutionary mode. Where is he? There he is. No, wait. There he is. And he can't convince anybody that it's really happening. If I don't stop them, it'll be a total reversal of the natural order. Squiz is a squirrel who lives in the woods with his gang. He rules the entire forest. They're all my trees. I suggest you turn around and head right back from whence you came. Keep your tree. Lift that perch. Swing those pines over here. I'm Riley, the beaver, and the beavers take a, a certain degree of pride in their work. Uh, what do you got? Wood. What do you got? Wood. You want to trade? I went into audition for the villain in Spider-Man 3. Hiya! <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I'm one bad bad. But then I wandered onto the wrong stage. It's cool, because now I get to be the hero. We made it a big point to really let the actors add their own flavor into the characters. <laughs> we started with a character, and then we began to think of voices that would fit that character. We laid Martin's voice over drawings of Boog, and the warmth in it and the deepness of it, the sort of resonance of it, convinced us that he could fill this giant bare body. Hey, yeah, this is my town. These are my people. This is where I reside. I'm a bearskin rug. They can walk all over me. But until that happens, 
I ain't going out without a fight. Did he say the F word? Bastion's actually a pretty big guy, and his voice fits perfectly down into this tiny, scrawny little mule deer. Terrible but wonderful at the same time. It's like freedom in the cup! Ding dang, out of hand! I sort of came with like the energy and like no censorship button. The directors really help me have confidence in that. Then the herd, like you just got a new idea. The herd! I gotta find the herd! And then beyond that, that's hard to keep up. I think one of the biggest things that they gave me was keep pushing me for more. Set me free! <laughs> you were like a little angel. Except for your fat and snoring, like... <laughs> We videotaped them, so our animators were able to watch the performances at the recording session. They picked up a lot of Martin traits. Don't mess with the booster. I credit the directors. I, they, they, you know, told me where I need to be, what, what energy that I need to have. Behold, the mighty grizzly. Boke, oh. oh. what is that short for? Booger. <laughs> a fifth of the lines are Ashton just riffing with Martin. Untie me. That, please look, look. Nobody's looking. Ain't gonna be able to do it. What am I gonna do? I don't want to be mounted on a wall. Calm down. Ain't gonna happen. It's not. We would go in there with our storyboards and we would pitch the storyboards to Ashton and Martin. They both knew where to go with the material and they would do a lot of improvisation. That's right, fool. You better run. Keep on prancing, you panty wasted cow. <laughs> Gary Sinise is the voice of Shot. He's in the perfect villain. Somebody forgot to flush! Gary went nuts with his character. You have Gary Sinise, who is this kind of buttoned-down, really serious actor. And for him, it's been so much fun. <laughs> he did this crazy laugh, and everybody went, that's it! And he went, you're kidding. <laughs> Well, I kept asking them if they were sure they wanted it bigger and louder and crazier and stuff, and they did. No, no, no! We've got Deborah Messing as Beth the Park Ranger, and she brings a lovely, nutty quality. We rocked that house, didn't we, boo? They're just getting barraged by all these crazy animals in the forest that are played by voices like Billy Conley. This is McSquizzy stuff. Nobody messes with McSquizzy, because that's me. John Favreau is a beaver. I want you to cantilever that seat on the bias down by the north end. You got that? Put a twig in the hole. Oh. Um, I, I mean, I get the VIP treatment pretty much everywhere I go. You know, like restaurants give me free refills on coffee and pop. And the grocery stores, they put my stuff in the bag for me. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet life. Animation is such an amazing process. I love seeing the evolution of taking a character that doesn't exist at all and seeing them become real. Who's there? Seduction is a fun scene, and it's a pivotal scene in the movie because it's when Elliot barges his way into Boog's little comfortable environment and lures him out. We're busting you out of here. Let's go. Let's do this. At first, I think Elliot's just trying to put it together, and then it dawns on him that Boog is a pet. I get it. You're like a pet. <laughs> Ain't nobody's pet. Right. And all of a sudden, the last thing is... Elliot then tempts him out into the outer world, and Boog has not even ever had a candy bar in his life. What's that? I call them woohoos, like, uh, woohoo! Do you want one? I know where there's a bunch of them, but you gotta go. Outside. Oh. Outside. Mm. Woohoo! Roughing it was a challenge um, as far as a sequence goes. We had two goals really for the sequence. One, to kind of bring the characters through a whole bunch of environments so it felt like they were traveling and covering ground. And in this sequence, we also had to introduce almost all the rest of the secondary animal characters in our film. There's so much comedy that comes with Boog and Elliot who just can't get along. Hey, hey, guys, check it out. There goes the largest carnivore in North America. The Mighty Grizzly. And he's a good dancer. We're gonna be in a show. 
Ends up getting caught up in the flood, too. <laughs> we really wanted to make a movie that had big action sequences. Part of the challenge was we need to have an entire dam collapse, drive down a mountainside, pulling trucks, trees, and furry animals along with him. The fur has to get wet. The truck has to get wet. That is real cool. I mean, it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Huh? Ah! <laughs> oh, grab a boulder! Grab a boulder! Like you know. Authenticity was important to me. I'm a method actor. I hung out with real wild bears to get how they talk, you know, get their rhythms down. After a week or so, I realized real bears don't talk. Of course the animals are smarter than humans. Is this a private fighter? Can anybody join? Good, because we'll need your nuts. And your acorns too! This is gonna be great! Are you ready for this? This is awkward. Yes, it is. Beware of the smart deer with one antler. Cause he's smarter than you. Boop, this is great. Let's do this every year. <laughs> What would animals do if they did have a bra to use as a slingshot? Would they use it or would they wear it? Because you expect them to be victims when they're clearly the dominant members of the woodland society. Ah! No! No, 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 no! Can you, they use porcupines? <laughs> Bless me. Shoot a porcupine at somebody. See how that feels. Show me your girl face! Girl! Girl! Let's kick some hunter bahooki! No one wants to be hunted if the tables are turned. How would you feel? Bullseye! Open season. Freedom! Hey, Earl. Ain't that your truck? Oh, that's a bummer. You mean Sir Boog? Sure, he's a real pro. Yeah, I mean, he's. Did you hear his roar? That sounded real. I'm thinking about becoming a writer, write my own script. That is, after I learn how to spell, you know. I was the only one that was willing to take it off for the role. D don't worry, though, it'll grow back. <laughs> I think. Could somebody look it up, like online or something, and see if these things grow back? 